Good morning, my name is Jacob Holger, I'm an artist sculptor, and this morning we are going to make a uh, Zen or meditating cat Zen garden with moss and stone. Um, we're even going to make a little rake uh, to use in the garden. We're going to do everything from scratch. And we're going to start by making a little meditating cat with polymer clay. This is uh, Sculpey 3 brand, but you could probably use just about any uh, kind of clay. Um, if, it's, uh, if it's a water-based self-hardening clay that you're using, uh, you have to keep in mind that it's probably not going to be able to handle moisture. So when you water the moss, you'd have to lift it off probably and all that um, best thing to do is use a polymer clay because it is um, fairly moisture uh, resistant now i started off with kneading the clay and what that does also is it conditions it the kneading gets the clay warm to the touch and soft and pliable and easy to sculpt and then it also mixes up all the ingredients in the clay and i'm using black clay because uh, my finishes look really good on it and I'm going to show you later on in the video how to finish the cat to make it look really cool. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a little bit of clay here. We're going to roll it into a ball. Like that. And now I'm going to hold my uh, two fingers on either side like this. About, uh, about midway down. And I'm going to roll back and forth like that. What that does is it basically creates uh, a shape for the head, the neck, and the beginning of the body. It just kind of makes it uh, a lot more manageable to do it that way. Instead of sculpting the head first and then trying to put it on the body later. That just gets us started. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shape the head a little bit with my fingers uh, kind of making it look a little bit like that. Next I'm going to take my thumbs like that kind of on the top and to the front and I'm going to push them in and when I push them in it kind of creates the indentations for the beginning of the eyes and the bridge of the nose. I'm just going to squeeze the bridge of the nose there to Tighten it up and make it a little bit uh, um, not not quite as wide. Now what I'll do is I'll take a, a small piece of clay, roll it into a ball, and put it here on the end of where the nose would be, and that kind of terminates the uh, the end of the nose there. And then I blend that in. basically drawing the clay from the part that I just added and um, blending it w into the um, into the rest of the head and go around and do that all the way around like that now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two small balls of clay that are the same size so I roll one like that and roll another and make them two to the same size and I'm going to put one here just to the left of the center of the nose uh, and tip of the nose there and the other one just to the right of the center of the tip of the nose. That is kind of what I call the whisker area where the whiskers would be. And I blend that in all the way around on both sides. And I just basically just press it in and kind of for me a little bit to uh, look the way I want. 
these two uh, little areas here should be fairly close together but uh, you don't want to blend those you want that nice uh, dividing line there between the two just going uh, just blending a little bit more and it should look like that I'm going to take another little uh, ball of clay and I'm going to put it up underneath here for his mouth and then I'll blend that in on the sides and back like that okay okay and next I'm going to take a Sculpting tool, um, and you can find these online, you can find them in an art store, that sort of thing. The other thing is you could use uh, the uh, back end of a paintbrush. You could take a paintbrush and use uh, the back end. Something bigger would work. This is also a paintbrush uh, handle, but the, uh, the brush part came off. Um, and uh, you could use a tool like this. You might have seen these around. Uh, a lot of polymer clay people use these. I'm going to go ahead and use this wood tool. And I'm just going to uh, put an indentation right there where I want the uh, eyes to go. And this is going to be for the eye sockets. And I want to do two of them. And I want to make sure that they're both the same height, the same distance apart. And I just want to check that beforehand. And I also want them to be the same depth. I don't want them one to be deeper than the other. Just uh, make this. I want them basically to be the same, like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little ball of clay and this is going to be for the eyeball and I'll try it in there to make sure it looks right and you'll see how it lo it's supposed to look in a minute when I get it sized right. So that's about right now so I'm going to take it out and since the eye sockets are the same I made them the same. I want two eyeballs the same size. I need a little bit more clay on one. I just add it, take a little bit of clay, put it on, roll it again, and make it two eyeballs the same size. Let's move this off the side here. And then what I do is I put them into the eye sockets and just press them in gently. Like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another sculpting tool. This one's just a little bit sharper on the end here. And I'm going to put in the pupil of the eye. Which is shaped like that. I'm going to do that on both, on both eyeballs. That now kind of gives the eyeball life and makes it look like it can see. And, um, just uh, try to get them to look alike. Okay, now I'm going to take a small noodle of clay, like this. And I'm going to put it over top 
the uppermost part of the uh, of the eyeball and blend it in all the way around. Well, not all the way around, but just at the top there like that. Like that. And then I'm going to make another one from the other side. Like that. And then bun that in also to the top of the head. to uh, blend that in in the center there, like that, with the tool. Now I'm going to take two balls of clay, and this is going to be for the ears. It's a lot easier to get the ears to look alike and be about the same size if you roll two balls to begin with. The same size, like that. And then, if you roll it on one end like that, it'll make the, uh, it'll start making the ear look like a point. Like that. And if you make both ears at about the same time, it's easier to get them to look alike. Then you can squeeze them a little bit to kind of flatten them out like that. But not too flat, just a little bit. Now we have two that are very close to the same. And they go up here, just behind the eyes, right, right there. If you put them in the same place on the ba on the back of the head, there, there's a good, a strong likelihood that they will look very close to the same. And that's how they look it now. And then you just blend them in. all the way around. Now, if you want the cat to be smaller, you just work with a smaller piece of clay. If you want it to be bigger, you work with a larger piece of clay. The process that we're doing now is the same. No matter how big or small you want to make the cat. I'm using a tool because it's easier to get to the front of the ear with a tool than it is with my fingers. And for a little added detail, you can take a shaped uh, tool like this and you can place it on the front of the ear and then just push in like that and it creates a nice little ridge there which is uh, fairly common for a uh, cat's ear to be shaped like got the, the 
beginning of the cat there now. Now we have uh, to pay attention to the body a little bit. I'm just going to roll it a little bit here. And now I'm going to take um, a bit of clay. I'm going to knead it a little bit. Roll it into a ball. Then a slight cone, like almost like that there. And to join the pieces to make them a little bit more, um, to bond better. I'm just going to score this one. Though. Scoring is the same thing as roughing up that surface. There's two surfaces. I'm going to rough up both of them like that. And then I'm going to uh, put them together and uh, twist a little bit while applying pressure. And that's going to... Um, make them bond nicely, become one with each other. And then I'm now blending those parts together. So just kind of doing a little shaping here as I go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of clay and uh, roll it into uh, a shape like that to start off with. I'm going to um, bend this end in like that and just put it on the front and that's kind of the uh, the shape of his legs in a lotus position and I join that with the uh, the body his body I'm gonna add just a little bit more clay to the top of that to make it a little little uh, thicker I start with a, another shape like that and in the the ends like that and put it on top and then press it in and then blend that in to uh, make it the shape I want now lift it off the table there and uh, pick it up and then I can blend the, the sides and I can take a sculpting tool and blend uh, the back of that uh, we'll call it its legs because that's basically what it is even though it's not really shaped like its legs it's shaped more like a robe and that's basically what we're trying to achieve I'm going to put a piece of paper down so the clay doesn't stick to the table. So as I get closer um, to completing, it's going to be easier for you to visualize. Um, now I'm going to take um, a piece of clay. Get this, get this out of the way for a minute. A roller ball. And then I'm going to roll it into an oblong shape or noodle like that that's fairly uniform. I'm going to bend that up a little bit, bend that up a little bit. I'm going to squeeze that right at the corner there to kind of give it, these are going to be his arms and this I want to be kind of like shaped like the elbows there. Let's see how that works. Like that. And just put it there, kind of center. And like that. And 
just mold it into place and then you can take also you can take a, um, a sculpting tool and you know blend that in there I don't want to blend it in down here because I want that, that uh, dividing line right now. You know, whenever you're working, you can always go back and shape and, you know, think, you know if, you, if you want to make your cat look a little different while you're working, you can do that. You can take a little break and do that. Now I'm going to roll a noodle clay. Start off with a ball. And then I'm going to roll it. Into a noodle shape like that. And I'm going to make a collar for him just to it'll kind of end the or terminate uh, the top of the rope i just wrap that around like that and uh and flatten it a little bit you know don't don't like squish it but you know flat flatten it a little bit like that And then I can uh, just uh, sculpt it in a little bit. Just put a little dividing line there. Where it would come together, the um, closure of the of the robe. Now what I can do is I can take a sculpting tool, go to the center here, and put in a dividing line between the two arms, like that. Going back to his ears a little bit. Now what I'll do is I'll take um, a, uh, a small ball of clay, two of them. I need two about the same size. I'll roll them into uh, two uh, noodles. So they're about the same same size. And then I'll put one here, and this will be the end of the sleeve. Like, right, like that. And this one here. And then blend that in at the uh, into the arm. I can just cut this in a little bit here. that and I also can take just to make the uh, robe look a little bit more interesting I probably need a little bit more clay there uh, roll a ball starting with a ball 
and then I'll roll it into a noodle. Sometimes it's easier to roll on the table because you can get more of a uniform and uh, shape, and it's also uh, you know just easier to handle. back down, bring my cat back over, and I'm going to wrap that around the, uh, the robe at the base there. And, uh, and then I'm just going to uh, blend that in to the uh, bottom of the robe and that will give us a little bit of a drape. Just, uh, and it will also make the robe look a little bit more, uh, more interesting. Uh, so we'll go around. If you ever want to know how to sculpt the robe, well, this is how I do it. Um, it's uh, fairly convincing. Picking it up might be easier. And then, going back, I'm just like, still kind of playing with his ears a little bit. And, uh, and then, we'll start to put in the wrinkles. What I do like to use is my uh, wood sculpting tool. This one is uh, kind of sharp at the end here. And uh, I do like some symmetry. And basically all I'm doing here is I'm just carving in um, lines, which will be the wrinkles of the robe. I like some symmetry, but, you know, it doesn't really have to be really, really, like, close, but just a hint that of, uh, of symmetry. So fairly close to the same, uh, you know, wrinkle placements and that sort of thing. And then, uh, on the arms, what I do generally is just, um, you know, just drawing in lines like this.
take your time. There's really no rush at all, I wouldn't think. And they were getting close. So now what I do is after I've got the lines drawn in, I just uh, go around and just apply a little bit of pressure. And what it does is it is it that pressure, applying pressure on it, um, will close some of those lines that I just carved in. Some will remain open, and it gives kind of a natural appearance. The other thing you can do is you can uh, pick up some of the robe like that, pushing up on it, and it gives it more of kind of a natural how the robe would lay if it was if it was uh, in contact with uh, you know in, in contact with the ground where you're sitting it just looks it makes it look a little bit more natural you also can um, turn it upside down but I want to tell you also that it's really best if you can just cradle your sculpture instead of gripping it with your fingers because uh, it's really easy to, to uh, deform the clay if you're squeezing it. And now what I'm doing is just to make it stronger, giving uh, the, the entire sculpture, we want to have uh, structural integrity. So what we do is we go back on the bottom and come back and um, blend in all those little gaps in there. I'm just mostly, I'm just kind of cradling the sculpture in my hands. I'm not really squeezing down on it. And, uh, and there is kind of basically our cat. Now what I'm going to do is, um, we're going to go ahead and do the finish on it so we can move on to the next part of our uh, garden. So I'm going to be using uh, Pearl X pigments and this is antique bronze. I just keep mine in a lid because I'm always using it. And the best way to apply this is with a finger and then use a paintbrush where you can't get with your finger. And I'm going to show you how, how I would do that. Um, so uh, you have your bronze and uh, cradle of sculpture in your hands so as not to damage it. Um, and I am leaving my sculpting marks in which is something I commonly do. But in the video description below the video down below um, there will be uh, some, uh, links to some videos on how to smooth polymer clay uh, there will also be um, a tool and supply list and baking instructions for your uh, for your cat um, and uh, what I do basically is I just um, dip my finger into the bronze I swirl it which helps get it a little bit more subdued when it goes on and it also makes it a little bit finer and then I just uh, basically go over the sculpture lightly to uh, highlight the uh, the sculpture and it's uh, it's really a nice finish um, very natural uh, deep rich um, look um, I am trying to leave lots of black showing I am doing the bottom also because uh, then it will um, 
have continuity, the planets will have continuity throughout. Now, whatever my finger can't get that I want to get, that, you know, I want to go back and touch up, I'll do with a brush in just a minute. do is I, I dip the brush in and I dab off as much of the excess as I can get so it's um, going to be a continued uh, subdued uh, finish that I'm trying to achieve. I do try to get the eyes because I, I think that's important but leaving you know the pupils alone so they you know I've got that contrast and, and color So the, um, I really like this bronze. I just think it has a lot of character. And you can see by leaving the sculpting marks in, it just, um, it actually looks like bronze. Um, but you can also, uh, of course, smooth it if you like to do that. I think that's going to be a really nice addition to the garden. I do, by the way, I do other animals and, um, you know, you could look at the uh, some of the other videos I've done with other animals and, uh, you know, just apply that to this if you wanted another animal. Um, I should have videos on how to make dogs, lions, all kinds of things. So if you want another animal for your creature, your medita uh, meditating creature, you can do that. Now we're going to set him off to the side here. And we're going to get some wire. This is uh, this is galvanized steel wire. We're going to use it to make a rake. And um, I cut off a length. This length I've got here is about 18 inches long. I'm just going to move this cat somewhere else for now. There we go. Now um, you can use. Uh, you can you to do this to make this rake it's a lot easier if you use pliers you can use this kind of plier here this is needle nose pliers um <clears throat> but you also can use this type of plier which is also needle nose <clears throat> pardon me but it doesn't have any kind of teeth on it uh, it's mostly for making jewelry so what i do is i come up the uh the wire and this wire by the way is uh, 20 gauge galvanized steel wire um, and uh, 20 gauge is, is very easy to work with um, you also could try 18 gauge or 16 18 is actually heavier thicker stronger and 16 is even more stronger or more thicker or heavier um, so of course the the larger the number the um the smaller and, and, and softer and easier it is to, to be to work with also keep in mind that uh, wires if you get them at like beading shops and craft shops and that sort of thing they are uh 
you can get them in all kinds of colors. I mean, really just about, it's almost limitless. They have a lot of colors, so if you wanted to make your rake in a different color, you could do that. Um, this is a silver tone color. So I'm going to come up the rake about maybe 8 inches. And I'm going to use these pliers, and I'm just going to uh, bend it like, like that. I'm going to come up the rake. I'm going to use the tool itself to measure. I'm going to come up that far, right there. And bend it back. So it's almost like a little zigzag. Using the tool to measure again, come up to right about there. And bend it back. And you'll see where this is going in just a minute. And then trying to use the tool to measure. Sometimes it's a little bit hard, but bend it back. Now what I'm what I'm working for towards here is ending up with three tines that I can use to sculpt the sand. Now I have basically in a minute I'll have three. One, two, three. I'm bending it like that, and this is going to start the creation of the handle. And I'm going to also bend this now. So it's shaped like that. And now I'm going to uh, cross these over like that and uh, I want to uh, twist them together. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another pair of pliers and I'm going to squeeze these together, this, this, uh, this end. Like that. And then I'm going to do that for all three. And I'm going to take this, uh, the pliers here, and I'm going to put the tine into it so that it runs just to the end here, right on this side. And I'm going to bend that. I'm going to do the next uh, tine also like that and bend that 
So that's how it's going now. And then I have three. And then I'll push those times um, together. So they're about the, the same distance apart. Like that. That's how it should look. I'll finish uh, twisting this here. And then I'll come up the hand uh, up. This is would be the, is going to be the handle. So I just want it to be a little bit longer. So I'm going to bring it up to about there. Hold it back. And then what I'll do is just to make it easier to twist, I'll <clears throat> take a pair of pliers and just take a hold of the end here. And cross it over and by, by twisting it like this, it will make the wire a lot stronger. We'll just have it come down. And then you can take a pair of wire cutters and cut off the excess. You do want to watch where those wire ends are going, those little pieces and that sort of thing. You don't want them in your eye and you don't want them on the floor because stepping on them is probably not a good idea. They'll be sharp and they can hurt your feet. So just keep an eye on that. Don't let them go flying everywhere. And then you can just shape it so it's uh, nice and straight. And, and that is how you make a little uh, wires and garden rake. And we'll be using that a little while once we get our garden set up. Okay, we're back and um, we've got the ingredients for our garden. We have, um, this is uh, uh, scenic sand here. Um, it's pretty much white, uh, white sand. Um, I bought this online and uh, it goes a long ways actually. It's pretty good stuff and it's really smooth and fine and it's really good uh, sand for this type of garden. And uh, I've just, got, I just kind of brought together uh, many things together. I've got a little garden bench. I don't know if we'll use it. I'm not sure if it's suitable for this kind of thing, but We've got um, seashells and uh, stones, different kinds of stones and colors, and we've got a crystal, and we've got a little pagoda that I made at another time. Um, we've got a little tea light candle, uh, some bigger stones, this stone here. And we got the stone here. And of course, we have our cat, meditating cat. And we have a um, wire zen garden rake that we made also today. And, uh, and we've got some moss here. Um, and it has little sprouts. Can you see that? 
little sprout coming up out of the moss. Isn't that pretty? So, um, this is fern moss, and I do get this from around my house, and, uh, um, actually there's a lot of it growing around. It's, what's really neat about it is the, uh, it's made up of little, um, tendrils that look like ferns, and, uh, it's really pretty. It's low drought, meaning that it won't dry out, dry out easily, and if it does, it's not going to hurt it as badly or, you know, quickly as it would other uh, drought or dryness would uh, hurt other moths. You do want to keep it moist, and uh, you can do that with a misting bottle. This is a misting bottle here. And uh, you just, uh, just spray it, you know, a couple day, once a day or a couple times a day keep it nice and nice and moist and so we're just going to go ahead and start putting this together and I'm just going to put some of this moss here and I'm um, just going to play a little bit you know this is really kind of the fun part about having this kind of uh, you know moss and sand zen or meditation garden I'll just put some Moss in here. Um, this is um, this plate here is a uh, uh, clay, uh, fired clay uh, garden plate, or they call it a garden dish. And uh, you can get these uh, at most any garden center. And uh, the sand I bought online, um, but you also can go to your hardware store and get play sand. I have a big bag of play sand that I, that I use uh, frequently enough. And uh, so we'll do that. And then I think, um, I think I'm going to see here how the, what would look nice. Oh, I like that. So these are these are nice because they're kind of like meditation stones. You know, you could just concentrate on that. Put the cat in here. And uh, let's see, uh, probably go ahead and put some sand in. Let's move the bench out of the way. And uh, the way I do that is I just uh, I just take a spoon and spoon it in. I'm gonna adjust the camera here a little bit. And And this gives me pretty good control around the uh, around the moss. I just love I just love making these um, these gardens. Even, you know, even the process of uh, making, making one of the gardens um, can be almost a spiritual practice for me. Now what I'll do is once I've got the sand in there, pick it up, pick up the plate and I'll just... happy side and that that kind of smooths it out okay. and then I've got some other stones here so I think I'll maybe put that one there And 
um, maybe uh, of course he shall kind of like on right there and uh, but this crystal here where can we put that right, maybe right here This is, uh, I'm not sure, I can't remember the name of oh, hematite, hematite. This is, I just love these, I think they're beautiful. And, um, I'll just set it back there. And, uh, I've got a candle here, so I, I want to do that. A little tea light. I get these at my, at the, um, local department store put it put it right there that way I've got some room here I've got our rake that we made I think this is this is really neat they're really neat and uh, I'm just gonna put a little design in here just kind of my hands not real steady for it <laughs> but, this little design there and you can adjust the times you can make them closer together you know, just bend them if you want whoops <laughs> and uh, let's see I'll put that right there and then uh, I think I'll put in a couple a couple stones here Couple black stones. Wow. So much fun. So when you make yours, I hope you'll send me a picture and uh I'm, I think I'm gonna leave that one out. And what I might do is I have um I have this other little shell here. I think I'll just put it here. Wow, that is so much fun. And remember, we you know we just started with our materials that you know made everything from scratch, right here, right today. Um, yeah, I think it's really great. So you know you want to mist your moss so you can lift the cat and stone off of it. You also can put the moss around your uh, installations or whatever you have in there. Um, you don't want to burn candles unattended. Just keep that in mind. And uh, you want to keep your your moss in bright sunlight, but not. Um, with the sun beaming down on it because I can it doesn't like that but you know bright sunlight is good and um, wow this is just beautiful I love it wow so exciting and so um, that's about it uh, if you have any questions or anything like that you can let me know um, you can uh, you can leave comments in the comment section and uh, you can leave questions in there, but you also can email me. And then my email address is on the About section of my channel page here on YouTube. Also, um, if you could give me a thumbs up on the video and let me know that you liked it. And, um, and then um, also uh, subscribe to my channel because I do a lot of videos like this um, along these lines and uh, a lot of videos especially with polymer clay although I do work in other types of clay and other mediums like wire for example which can be beneficial as you can see and uh, and so you can uh, so as far as my email goes you can send pictures you can send conversations questions, comments, whatever you like, and um, and I do interact with people on there and also in the comment section as well of the, uh, of the channel, and uh, 
so that's that. Also, I do make things for people. So if you want something made for you, um, um, you can let me know, and I'll give you a free quote. Um, I think you'll probably enjoy the things I make. And you can also check out my art shop. Um, I have many, many items in there, things I've made. And the address will follow at the end of the video. So, uh, you know, I really appreciate your support and for your watching and um, all your comments and likes and everything. It's been really great. I really, really do appreciate you guys. And uh, so, um, I thank you for watching and uh, have a great day.